We begin in Kaduna State this time now, northwest Nigeria. Well, Kaduna is still far from its maddening banditry. On Sunday alone, armed bandits stormed the Baptist Church in Kakao Daiji community of Chiko local government area of the state, killing two persons. They also abducted about 100 worshippers while they were still in a service. Meanwhile, gunmen stormed the staff quarters of the University of Abuja and abducted a professor of economics, Obana Joseph, as well as two of his children. Others were also kidnapped. Many Nigerians are of the view that the Uni Abuja attack is inevitable, and that is how we begin our discussions at this time. I begin with you, Cyril. Uh, well, to what extent could it indeed have been avoidable talking about the attack at the University of uh, Abuja staff quarters? Well, there are a few... Comp so, so first of all, yes, it could have been avoided um, entirely. This is an enclosed place. You have a university environment 20 minutes away from the international airport. Perhaps you see no show of our um, aviation industry. Nambaziko International Airport is close to that place. So how didn't we pick up... This is not just about responding to it. How didn't we pick up the fact that such a thing was in the offing? How didn't we realize that this this was uh, what was coming because these bandits didn't just wake up one morning and off and off a whim say we are going to attack that place they would have planned they would have um did, did some kind of survey intelligence guarding themselves they would have mapped out how they are going to approach that place mm -hmm. and then know the weak points to you know you know the where, where they will ap apply pressure and get the most vulnerable they kidnapped the professor his children um, his, his son Another one, the professor, his son, his daughter, another one. So you just know that these guys, they, 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 there's, there's a certain profile that matches their victims. Mm. So you're not looking at some ragtag people. These people have sat down, they planned. What were we doing with counter planning, with counter terrorism? What are we doing with also, you know, being able to avert this sort of uh, attack? So it, it means effectively that if a place like that university can be attacked, no other place can be spared anyway. Can that really be? After all, they told us that when Asso Rock uh, had armed robbers attacking. So this is the issue. Security is a paramount issue, but what it is today is far from um, is is far from the appearance of similitude of someone being in real control of this of of the of the, of the situation. It's like every man is to himself. God for us all, the one that is with, that, that, that is with let, let, let the devil take him. The, that attack could have been avoided, I believe, or, or, or could have been averted, I believe so, but we don't know what went wrong that gave them the, a, a field day. Because I think the SMS we saw that, that circulated, you know, from lecturer to lecturer saying, let's pray for the release. Reports are now suggesting that these people didn't just go and take them out in five minutes. So all the while that they were carrying girls, carrying boys, carrying one professor one, professor two and his family. What was happening? How is it that no, you know, there was no effort at all to rally to, so something is fundament, fundamentally, fundam the very foundation of the security of the state is badly flawed. And right. if the foundation is that broken, there's nothing anybody can do about it. O all right, and report after report had it that the bandits numbering 50 or so, uh, operated for more than an hour. They even took bays in uh, a primary school, a public primary school at the back of the staff quarters. You know, so many, you know, accounts. But, you know, these particular that I just dropped now just resonate across the varying reports. It's in Abuja of all places. So what is, what is your take? How much of an issue is this for you? And especially if we look at the uh, reactions now that we're seeing, first the school is saying, both staff and students must carry their um, ID cards at all times. The police also says it has mounted an interagency uh, a security operation across the school and, you know, its environs. Sam? Well, um, if government needs to, you know, uh, check how terribly bad our security situation has, has become, all it needs to do is just run through... Um, the regular features here on journalists hangouts. I've mm. always said it that almost every week, more than 70% of the time, we sit down here and all we discuss is our internal security challenges. So it's, it's, it's a big problem. You, you, you call it an issue. It's a, it's a very big problem. And 
Um, altogether, I'm not, I'm not surprised because it has become almost a daily occurrence that some of us have become, you know, uh, we just wake up believing that some kind of report, you know, will go out there concerning our security situation. University of Abuja is not as protected as the NDA that was breached. <laughs> so, I mean, the guys are basically having a field day, and we don't seem to have any answer to it. It's, 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 it's a shame. And all you hear is, well, uh, we've got interagency, you know, <laughs> arrangements, we're chasing after them and all that. The bottom line at the end of the day is that these families are going to, are going to cough out money. The guys are in the business to make money. Now, it's clear to us that this is not about you know, a group of people or criminals, you know, uh, going after some people because of uh, their faith or whatever they believe in. The guys are just bandits, criminals who are out to make money by kidnapping. So uh, what bothers me and indeed most Nigerians who, you know, are watching our, 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 our space is that with the government doesn't seem to have an answer to you know, to all this. And it, it leaves the citizens, you know, in a situation where, uh, you know, just like, um, just as he said, you know, it's God to us all and all man for himself. And we're not altogether surprised because even those who are supposed to be watching over us are telling us to go carry arms and defend ourselves. Mm. And you wonder how much of, of, of that uh, is really practicable. I mean, you and I are not licensed to carry the kind of guns the bandits carry all over the place. So even if you have the license, you can't, you know, you're not licensed to carry an AK-47. What you probably will have is uh, something that, you know, can't uh, confront anyone who is, you know, probably armed. Mm. So all we, all we can do at this forum is continue to, you know, um, call out government to do what is needful. Their primary responsibility is to protect lives and, and property. It's, it's, it's a shame that just next door, and we had been warned in the past that these guys are very close to to the seat of power. Now it's becoming, you know, even more glaring. I mean, glaring that uh, they can just walk in anywhere and pick pick anyone if they mm. could breach our, you know, uh, military institutions. I mean, what else? What else? And I, I think that uh, authorities, um, especially those, those who, you know, have the task of managing our schools, we need to also begin to um, be proactive. You know, the, the footage that I, that I saw about University of Buja yeah, the staff quarters indicated that there, were no, you know, parent, there was no perimeter fencing. And so the guys just basically strolled in and then walked away using the bush part and all that. So what will the security agencies do but tell us that uh, they're after them? I can, I can tell you that at the end of the day, no culprits <laughs> will be found. No sanction will matter that to any, any person. And families will just go home and lick their wounds and spend the little that they have saved over the years. It's a shame. Government must take responsibility. We can't stop talking about it. That is what they have signed up to do. And we've given them the power to do that on our behalf. Asking us to go carry that carry across is, is, um, is, 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 is um, playing the ostrich. They know that we cannot effectively defend ourselves without without um, uh, the law you know, empowering us to do as much as that. Otherwise, you, you have a descent into anarchy where everybody is carry, carrying a gun to protect him or herself. And the, the issue with, with this banditry, if you look at um, you know, the, the, the terrors, the unleashing, not just in the, w in the Northwest, but now we are seeing in elsewhere, uh, if we look at you know, the, the operations, the, the, the partners in crime, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. Uh, let's check out what is happening in Kaduna State, for example. Uh, some have also said that this particular attack now where hundreds of worshippers well, were, were kidnapped, you know, as well as the murders that also occurred, uh, was um, worsened. The problem was worsened uh, due to the shutdown of telecom services. Mm -hmm. w where do you stand in, in this argument? Because this also seems to be an unresolved debate. No, I, 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 I for one, I, I was highly suspicious of the shutting down of telecom services. Now, if that suspicion was unfounded, what we have on our hands is a clear, is clear evidence that whoever thought of that policy either didn't think it through thoroughly or just wanted to set the stage to worsen 
a very bad situation. How do you go to a place to kidnap up to 100 persons? How do you convey them <laughs> from point one to point two? Who is deceiving who in this country? We're not children. We're seeing this drama unravel. And I hope that, you know, the people who are stoking this fire will... Because there are questions that must be answered. You shut down telecom services. Now, it has become counterproductive. Kemi, are you aware that the chairman of Khan in uh, Kaduna State, in one of the reports in which was quoted, oh. one of the relatives of the kidnappers was telling the family. No, no, no. One, one of the, the kidnappers was, was telling the ki a, 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 a relative of, of their victim that for the fact that they had to trek <laughs> a long even, distance, even the band they were, they were yes, them out. yes, to, to get to get um to get what's network. it called to, to get network to reach the family to that that had now led to inflation in the industry of kidnapping that that now inflated the the ransom that they are going to pay <laughs> is it possible so how so what the shutting out so is any can can we uh, is is anybody is anybody in the anti-terrorism unit of all those places are they also being able to monitor this kind of phone calls and to determine, to triangulate and determine where this cause I'm emanating from, and to be able to, and to be able to use that as, you know, a means of getting across to them. But I'm not also foolish. These same bandits, there are Nigerians who have been visiting them, having conversations with them. The informants. Mm -mm, not informants. Not informants. <laughs> informants are wanting to deal with. There are Nigerians who have been going to bandit camps across the Northwest and well, maybe Northeast or wherever, and I've been having meetings with them. And I've been coming back to tell us what the bandits said, true or false. We are, we, we, so there is, th this is not the time to, for me, I'm saying that, you know, let God hasten the day when he will judge the haters of this country. I have not, because I can't take up a weapon. See what I was going to suggest. I was going to say that now that we find ourselves in this extremely porous circumstance, we find ourselves in a situation where nobody is defending you. You're on your own. It is everyone to himself. Oh. Can government back up its statement about defend yourself by going to university campuses where you have staff quarters, going to police, maybe police staff quarters, go to civil service staff, staff quarters, and start teaching self-defense? It, it shouldn't be left to the Boy Scout and civil and uh, what's the other one? Man, 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 man over. Over. Can we now institute, can we now make self-defense a natural feature of our civil life? I wonder why people don't... Why, why Assuming would, why? that is the way to go. No, mm -hmm. it can be a first step. This is the point. All the countries that even make uh, compulsory military enrollment a national, as, in, as, 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 part of, as part of the national policy, these laws are born out of circumstance. If nothing was happening and we are brought this, this, this sort of idea, we would have said, we would have said to achieve what? But you need it, Kemi. Why do they teach young girls self-defense? It is because when the rapist comes, you find a way to ward him off. Every girl be, at the age of 15, 13, 14, 15 must learn self-defense. There are schools where you must, where, where you will have to learn it. It is for your self-protection. So if as, a, if as a country we have come to this crossroads, We've come to this, uh, you know, we've already passed the tipping point. But just to see whatever is left of it, we must be able, the reality is this, let me even explain. In the U.S., there's a debate about gun control. But the fact is that if somebody knows that you have a weapon, that you are armed, and he wants to come after you, he will think twice. Uh, but, 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 then, but then, but then, yeah, see, yeah, but then see where that has also, you know, yeah. no, no, left no, no. the U.S. So, can, too. Can let me put you on hold, Cyril. Okay. Cool. Uh, we, we will get, get back, you know, get more, more feel of this uh, topic from you. But let's hear from Sam. Okay, yeah. Um, I think the issue here is the sincerity uh, on, um, on the part of our, our leaders, you know, um, concerning whether they really do mean um, what they say when they ask citizens, you know, to defend themselves. We have had calls, even by uh, governors, who have said, let everyone, you know, bear arms and, and defend themselves. But I have argued here, you know, uh, that without proper regulation, I fear that we are going to, you know, descend into, into anarchy. We already have a crisis on our hands where our security operatives appear to have lost control, okay, of, 
you know, um, uh, uh, secu sec securing, you know, lives, lives and property. So what happens when people just wake up and everybody is carrying arms? It's going, it's going to be difficult. So it, it boils down to government doing what is right and showing some sense of urgency in what needs to be done. What we have at the moment is, is a situation where the government is so laid back, <laughs> you know, nobody appears to be taking the situation very serious, in spite of all the stats that, you know, stare us in the face. So we seem to have, you know, raised up our hands in surrender and say, okay, fine, um, things, will, things will sort out themselves. But it's not, it's not happening that way. You know, the whole thing appears to be turned into a huge joke. And I don't want to believe the reports that we have read, that the same bandits told their victims that look because, you know, it costs us more money to go search, you know, to go um, access network, network elsewhere, elsewhere then is, you, you have to pay more. It's a shame. The, the, the irony of it is that, the irony of it is that you, you have technology as, as a vehicle <laughs> that can help you fight this war. Okay, and then put you on hold. Okay. Uh, we have our very first caller, engineer uh, Fola from Songota. I hope I got your name right. Welcome to the program. Carry on, please. Uh, good evening. I uh, the guest in the house, engineer Afolabi. I'm calling from Songo, Ogun State. Uh, you see, we are in a dilemma of which everybody is now in panic. How do I feel if at night or at, mo at, at morning time I just discover that I am, I am kidnapped or my relatives? I think um, the problem of communication, um, we shut down the communication and the thing is getting worse and worse. I think we are not getting results on that aspect. What I will suggest is that the government will install the communication gadgets so that at least it will still help victims. Like the, the one that happened in Abuja now. Maybe if uh, or uh, in Kaduna, maybe if there had been a, a communication gadget, there would have been a lot on the security agents. And again, All right, I that believe that there are kind of conspiracies. All right. With, all right, thank you so much. I'm afraid we, we've run out of time. Uh, and thank you for that point that you just, you know, chipped in. But let me get your final take on this topic. Yeah, I was, I was going to stress the fact that we need technology to prosecute this, this war. And then here we are, you know, uh, uh, resolving to, you know, <laughs> dump technology in favor of uh, some other means of... And so that's, that's the sort of situation we have, in our ha have, we have on our hands. And, and I'd like to say here, because some of us have you know, uh, friends in the military or contacts within the military. And I've had a high-ranking officer in the military. And I say this with emphasis of, you know, uh, modesty. Say to me that the decision to turn off those networks are indeed, you know, hindering their, their job. I say this on my honor. So if someone who is an operative and is on ground is complaining, then you can imagine the kind of, you know, situation we have on our hands. So we seem to have a trial and error kind of thing. I, I don't see strategy in what, in what has played out because you need technology to prosecute this war. Now, if we're relying on local networks mm. to be able to communicate, then you ask yourself, what is available to our, to our soldiers, to our security operatives, to do their jobs better? You're talking about intelligence gathering. Would it, does it require you to start walking on the streets to ask people what is happening? No. You need tech. But the bandits so, so we are need very strong foot soldiers. We need, we, we need strategy. And, and I, I get back to my earlier point that the bandits also have informants who are strategic to, to their work. Of course, uh, but, they, but, they work with intelligence. Ab absolutely. They work with intelligence. Okay, so if we can even establish um, the lack of telecom services as a basis for this horrendous attacks in Kaduna, what is, how do you explain, um, you know, Abuja? Okay, someone is in a place where there is a raid by, by criminals. And you put a call through to, to the, the police force, you know, closest to you. How difficult can that be now to, to respond uh, to warrant why this, these guys can operate for an hour at least? 
Yeah, so I think uh, the answer is in the, is in, is in, is in the question because all people you want to run to are also afraid for their own lives. Do you mm -hmm. remember a story one time we heard about a police, was he a DP also that was kidnapped and that they, whether they paid the ransom to release him or something? So this is where we are. They are afraid for themselves as well. They, they, there's nothing to... And again, so back to Sam's point, there's something Sam was, that yes, they are not even kitted. Yes, yes, and about sincerity of people. Look, the fact is this. The program has to be two-pronged. I say it again. One, while you're dealing with the enemy and, inc and incapacitating him, you must now give capacity to the victim to make sure that All right. the victim is his own first line of defense. Okay, I put you on hold again. We have Garaba from Makode. Welcome. Please carry on. And uh, oh, please make evening. it brief. All right, good evening. You see, my take on this, honestly, if the government does not address the issue of unemployment, there's no way that we can succeed in this issue. The truth. Let's tell you the truth. You see, it's not the first time that they enter a school, they did it in Zaria, for technic, they did it in Kaduna. I give you look at it, they now come to it in Abuja. They do it in Niger State. If they think that they are safe in Abuja, they are not safe also. Honestly, they need to do the needful. Issue of unemployment needs to be addressed. If not, I'm sorry to say they have a nice day in Lagos. Thank you very much, Garaba. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so, um, Cyril? Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, what, what I was saying was that, look, it must be two-pronged. You must now go back, because every citizen must be his own first line of defense. We found th this, they, when, 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 when people say there are many light arms and weapons across Nigeria, there are arms are everywhere, in whose hands are these arms and weapons? They are in the hands of those. Because the level of regulation. It is in the hands of those in whose hands they shouldn't be. So when you mop those up, you make sure that, and it must be weapons, uh, and, 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 anyways, it must be the ability for somebody to be able to defend himself if he is attacked by the wrong person. If we don't do that, what else are we going to do? I maintain again that if those bandits who, who went to the Kaduna Baptist Church, how many were there that were able to round up more than 100 people? How do you even transport? Mm. Those people were, act, were clearly out of their wits. They didn't know what to do, so they just perhaps willingly said, let's yeah, let, let literally just go so, to avoid being killed or being injured. That's what happened. Is that the way it should be? Okay, but that, I, sorry. <laughs> um, as beautiful as um, the, argument. the argument is, you know that you and I will need legislation to get these things through. Fine. But it's, it boils down to how are we able to maximize or optimize the kind of architecture, secu security architecture that we have even laid in place for, 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 you know, for the protection of lives and, and, and property in this country. I think there are just too many gaps. All right. Well, well Sam, I, I want uh, Cyril to address that issue of regulation of gun ownership, if indeed we get, uh, if and when we get to that point. No, if, if we, it, it means that we are now going to re, re, rework our national pol uh, security policy, beginning with the citizen as the first man to defend himself and to see that the defense of himself as the mm. defense of the republic. That is the first thing that, that, that ought to be done. And then there will be regulation. We can borrow from what, what, what of this in, 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 in other claims. Your level of training, your level of training, there should be people, there should be people where, this where you can go be trained and be certified, determines the set of weapon that you're going to hold. And please, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I, 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 I didn't even think of gun ownership as the solution to the problem. What okay. I was talking about was basically self-defense. That if somebody came into your space, you are, you are fully equipped to be able... first reaction. Yeah, and, and so if gun ownership was going to be part of the equation, so, so be, be it. it. <laughs> so be it. All right. We'll rest the conversation at this point. Um, take a break. And that is, that is very much needed. Uh, we'll continue to journalists hang out, you know, for more. Please Welcome back to TVC News. Of course, you're watching Journalist Hangout. We talk about the ugly tale of collapsed buildings in Nigeria, especially in Lagos here. Uh, this latest case, of course, continued on Monday where a 21-story building in the Ikoyi area of Lagos caved in with many people trapped in the rubble. And Governor Babajide Songwulu has now ordered an investigation into the collapsed building, which was under construction 
While the number of casualties continues to rise and efforts to rescue other victims are also ongoing, there's so many questions uh, you know, regarding this particular one in Ekoi, the highbrow uh, part of Lagos, of course. Okay, so well, let, let, me, let me come to Cyril. Uh, well, Cyril, what kind of investigation are we talking about? Well, what the governor said is that, or what the state government has said is that two investigations are going to um, go on at the same time. First is the state government's own internal um, control mechanisms to find out what might have gone wrong. And number two, um, another investigation by an, by an independent panel comprising relevant professional organizations like the, um, the architects, um, builders, and so on. So these two will go together, and then we are going to see what comes out of them. Now, as you might be already be aware, the governor has ordered the um, indefinite suspension of the head of the building agency. So this is where we are at the moment. What we also do know was that um, when the deputy governor went to the scene of the incident, he did confirm that that building had been marked um, it was even sealed. and shut down for, right. yeah, sealed yes. actually, that, that's yeah. what I wanted to use, yeah. for four months because of anomalies. I cannot independently verify a letter I saw yesterday in which, dated I think for February last year. 2020. Yes, in which a service provider to the um, project had actually said that they couldn't um, vouch for continue, the integrity. continue with, with, with the project because they couldn't vouch for the integrity and authenticity of materials being used. You know, on, so if, when you put all of this together, my personal conclusion, first of all, is this. That building collapsed long ago. That's the truth. That building collapsed long ago. And without making light of those who have died, the people who's and made their souls rest in peace, the, the, the victims of that, of that, of that, of yesterday's collapse became victims long ago. What we saw yesterday was just a ritual, was, was, was just the, the culmination of perhaps negligence, some, you know, some kind of negligence, some kind of, because if indeed within a system, a project had been sealed and said this thing is with the anomalies we sense foul play here the materials are inferior we do not trust whatever it is, is going on here on whose authority was it now unsealed and on whose authority did 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 work right. now resume all right we will we'll try to make sense of all these issues that are paramount for you let me compare uh, your concerns now with, with that of sam's uh, for you what what questions uh, would you be asking now same questions that you know already out there in the public, you know, who gave approval for for work to be done. Um, if uh, there was an instruction to seal up the place, who unsealed it? Who uh, authorized you know work to proceed even with um, the the uh, um, government decision to seal up the place? Those for me are critical questions. And that, let, and that, me yeah. even add, let me even add some. Well, in contrast to what mm. Cyril said, that the building had collapsed, you know, way before it happened. But, but, but then we have um, eyewitnesses on ground yesterday saying it didn't even show any signs of cracking. The, the, uh, well, there were yeah. no signs. No, and to, they, to they, the wouldn't, outside they wouldn't know, probably because they are not experienced. The structural en engineers, again, if we trust that letter that, you know, that went viral yesterday, as far back as uh, almost 21 months ago, had said, look, we can't continue to be part of this project. And that could have been top secret. So those, those of them who are operatives, you can call them laborers on site, probably didn't know much of this. And that's why Siri said, I mean, this was a disaster waiting, waiting to happen. So the critical question is, if government sealed the place some four months ago, who, how did the owners of the property, you know, what, what kind of, what, what audacity, you know, led to the owners of the property asking workers to return, I mean, workers to return you know, to site and, and continue, continue with work. And if he acted on his own, why did the authorities not do the needful? Who shut his eyes, okay, mm. to the development? And that is why, you know, one would commend what the governor has done, but that wouldn't be enough. Asking the building control GM to, you know, go on indefinite suspension, you just want one part of it. In fact, the questions, I mean, the answers to the questions that need to be asked are just there. And we hope and trust that this investigation wouldn't, wouldn't take, you know, ages. Because it's clear 
those who were involved in the project at some point said, no, I mean, we don't feel safe. We don't want to be part of this anymore. The man who owned the place decided to turn his uh, back on, on government orders, okay, and proceeded with work. So we expect that the investigations will be, will be carried out and findings made public as soon as possible. And of course, it shouldn't be the kind of stuff that we have had in the past where we had, you know, uh, uh, story buildings, you know, uh, collapsing somewhere in Lagos. Remember the synagogue, synagogue, synagogue uh, incident? We don't know what has become of, of the findings till, till date. So, so this, th these, are, these are the concerns of Nigerians. Nothing should be swept under. The facts are just there. I, I, I still can't make sense of some of the images I, 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 mm. I, I, mm. I've seen. I mean, I've, I saw since, you know, since yesterday. Traumatizing. I mean, seeing people just, it's, 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 it's horrible. It's horrible. And to imagine that, you know, suspicions are that many more persons will be, you know, are probably buried under the place. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's a pity, really. And what the government needs to do is ensure that whatever decisions that have been taken in terms of probing, probing the incident should be done very quickly, findings made public, and people punished, punished for the role they played in this disaster. Uh, well, Femi Oshibono well, has you know, been in the news. Uh, of course, the internet is uh, replete with um, you know, interview and after interview talking about his, his, the kind of person he is, uh, internationally renowned you know, for, for building properties of this magnitude. And you know, you know, sadly, we get to this point that we have to talk about him in, 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 in this kind of manner. But um, I, I really don't know how to craft this question, but, but for Cyril, for you, uh, what, what questions would you want to be asking? Uh, okay, first we first heard that at a point he was even trapped. He was he was carrying out inspections uh, with um, you know highly reputable people, and we don't even know his whereabouts. There are also reports of him being arrested, and and all that. But you know, you know specifically for you, what do you think went wrong? No, sir. I I I I, I think I'd like to ask him if this has been done in. The UK, I think, is, is Portugal, South Africa, and so on. So, what happened? Why? What? What? What made this different? I would like to find that out. I I would like to know. Is it the Nigerian soil? Is it the Nigerian water? Is it the Nigerian air? <laughs> I would like to know, because you know there is the fear. And it, I mean, it may not be fair to just single out a name, you know, because I mean, this sort of um, this magnitude of I don't know what to call it now. <laughs> Disaster. Of what, what you're seeing it can't be traced to one person alone. People, you know, because, I mean, it, it takes two to tango. You cannot, this is the Nigerian system, again, that, that, that we cry about all the time. When people are sure, or when, when people have sort of have the confidence that they can do things and get away with them. You remember one, one that happened in Lekki? I think uh, uh, where you have us on the road, that road leading down. Yeah, yes. about four story of us yes. in there. It, it, was, it was being developed. Mm -hmm. You saw what happened on Lagos Island. So somehow I think we have a culture of sweeping things. Once the new circle ends, everything ends. But the fact is that we must continue to ask these questions. It is not a good thing that people are taking advantage of um, um, the common social need for shelter. People, because of the population, because of the, the high end, because, because of the increasing number of people who are perhaps transiting into the upper mobile class, you know, and so housing will continue to remain in a, 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 a need for many. We must get to the root of this. I would like to ask what really went wrong in this case. In the words of um, the Building Collapse Prevention Guild, uh, that, that will be the MD or so for the Koyo or Balinde, uh, sell. He says something went wrong technically for a building of that scale on the co construction to collapse if it wasn't pulled down, you know, or explosives explosives planted, you know, therein for it to have, you know, you know, just just come come down. Like you said, uh, the videos are, are really something uh, to to describe. But back to the question I asked Cyril about about the MD of Force uh, Heights. What could have gone wrong if indeed something technical? Yeah. You know, went wrong. We, we can only hazard guesses here. We can only hazard guesses. Probably inferior, you know, uh, materials were used in the and construction. And that has also and been, you know, yeah, that, that, yeah, that allegation had been made. Uh, I don't want to sit down here and, and draw conclusions. Absolutely. You know, for a property of, of, of that magnitude, you know, uh, some, some 
level of professionalism ought to have, you know, attended its development. So there are things that you do that the experts do, testing the soil, testing the integrity of the, 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 the work that has been done, the questions to ask, were all this done? Um, the other important question that should also be asked, when the other structural engineer turned down the offer to continue with the project, who else was recruited? How knowledgeable was, was he? Why, why did he resolve go ahead. go ahead to work with the property developer, knowing that certain issues have been raised concerning the integrity of, 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 of the building. All right. Well, so, well, well that said, um, gentlemen, l let me introduce uh, our guest for this hour now uh, to help make sense of this burning issue. the president of the Nigerian Institute of Building. He's also the, the former president of the Building Collapse Prevention Guild. Kule Awopudu, thank you so much for joining in on John List Hangout at this time. Okay, first off, so look at the scenario that played out in that... Um, February 2020 uh, circulation of uh, well, that correspondence uh, between uh, the engineers and uh, MD Foshaw Heights. So, so what should have happened after an engineer, you know, says he cannot continue? He doesn't believe in the vision uh, of um, you know the owners of a building he was helping to develop. As from four, four, fourth floor, please take it up from there. Naturally, one should salute the courage of the engineer, of the MD of that company that wrote the letter. That happened to be prowess, yes. However, you should not stop at just writing a letter to dissociate yourself from such a sensitive project. What stop him from going further to inform uh the authority the uh, concern or the regulatory body that this is a project that i was handling as uh, for structural supervision or as structural engineer however there is a disagreement on procedure so, to maintain our reputation, we are withdrawing. Assuming this letter, we got the acknowledgement letter, copy of that letter, mm. and also it was confirmed by Alaska officials or GF that this, they received this letter and nothing was done. So we should learn from this experience. When professionals are withdrawing from a project and you notice that the project continues without following due process, then you withdraw the attention of the appropriate authority to sanction the developer. This kind of uh, disaster we are witnessing could have been avoided. So honestly speaking, it has become a belabored issue, matter, for those of us who have been committed to this evangelism on prevention of building collapse. We have been on this assignment for a very long time. And the press too could also be advised not to only wait for when a building collapses before you help us hide on the need to observe uh, the regulations and then Mr. Obudu, let, let, me of let me also interrupt to also ask that you explain uh, what happens when the government says it sealed a property yeah. uh, under construction and then four months after we see, uh, going by the report circulating, that the, they are back at work. 
at what point does the government, or what conditions must be satisfied before the government okays resumption of construction activities? And can that uh, be bypassed? As, how can you, can you really go back without the government's knowledge or uh, permission now to continue working? Help us in, in that regard too. Uh, may I let you know that Eko is the eyebrow, number one eyebrow location we have in Nigeria. So any development in that area, in fact, any Lasca official in that area is always cautious. Developers and landlords, landlords in that area are very, very influential. Political influence is a problem some of these NAPCA officials have been facing. We were aware of this. It is people like us that can uh, 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 talk on this issue. But you know, government officials will not complain. And what I also learned was that uh, the guy claimed to be influential. But if we can leave these officials to execute this assignment without interference, it is, it is good for our profession. But nonetheless, uh, an action has been taken by the governor now by suspending the GM, where he who wears the crown must be ready to take responsibility good okay. we have had such a situation in the past during uh, governor ambo this tenor when lucky garden collapsed uh that was uh march 8 2016. the officers in charge of that area. All right, uh, Mr. Uh, dismissed. Mr. Kule Awobudu, I'm afraid I have to interrupt you. We've run out of time and we have uh, and more ground to cover. We were speaking with the president of the Nigerian Institute of Building, Kule Awobudu. Thank you very much for your contributions on the program. Let's uh, in now. Well, despite the threats posed by members of the indigenous people of Biafra, preparations towards Saturday's governorship election in Anambra State is in top gear while the candidates are intensifying campaign for votes and while the candidates have different approaches to solving problems facing the state, some are on the same page regarding how to ensure peaceful conduct of the election. The candidate of the APC, Andy Uba, the candidate for APCA, Professor Chuku Masuludo, and the People's Democratic Party's Valentine Ozibo called for dialogue with IPOB this to avert threats by its one week sit at home or threats of its one week sit at home in a number of states. Cyril, what do you make of that? No, what they've said is true. You will have to dialogue. I believe that's what you're talking about. You will have to find a way to, uh, to make peace. If you have tried other methods, such as putting, putting boots on your ground and that hasn't solved the problem, you're, you, you realize that you will you will have to sit down first of all to intelligently understand what the issues are and then approach it diplomatically. You will arrive at a better, so if you, you will arrive at a better solution faster than you ever can using any other method. And um, perhaps this rhetoric is also one that may help to um, soften the extreme rhetoric and stance of IPOB in you know, looking at the election as, as an enemy. The reality is that if, 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 if an Anambra state truly implodes, God forbid, if, if, if it really implodes, who will do anything? Even Apple can't come out and, you know. So the fact is that you, we must sit down to this. What people have lost in all these days of sit at home, all these days of, you know, violence on the streets, what, what people have lost can't even be quantified. My thinking is that the three candidates as, uh, at least are united on one issue, which is to say, we must sit down and have a conversation. And I think it's, it's, it's um, worth looking into. Sam? Engagement is key. And um, 
um, the calls that you know were made by uh, the uh, front runners in the Anambra Guba election is in tandem with with the feeling out there. You know, um, there's a limit to what you know force can achieve, and when you're dealing with a movement that is bent on its ways, you've got to be very careful because you know um, an uprising within that region, you know, could could mean a lot of instability in, in the system. So it's the call is the call is welcome. Um, we hope something will be made, you know, of, of these calls, uh, at least to help us achieve peace. But what is even much more disturbing is that even as these calls have been made, the kind of utterances that you hear on some, you know, uh, government uh, functionaries is a bit worrisome. A couple of days back, um, we had Sheo Garba say that um, the trial of uh, Namdi Kanu is going to, you know, um, bring an end to the, to the <laughs> IPOP struggle. <laughs> and you wonder if there is substance in, in that claim. Just yesterday, you had Loretta Anucci, another, you know, top government uh, functionary, you know, calling the leader of uh, IPOP as an agent of data and all that. Yes, you may have your position, but at this time, you know, it would be nice for, you know, um, key government, you know, uh, players to be very careful, you know, in the way they, they, they speak, mm. because the situation is really very volatile. When you make, you know, such utterances, you know, you, you tend to harden those who are agitating for whatever rights they, they think is theirs. So it's, it's, there is no alternative to, to engagement. You know, we've got to sit down and, 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 um, and dialogue. And it's not just about, you know, um, the, the, the clamor in the Southeast. It's about the, the Nigerian project itself. There's a lot, a lot of resentment, you know, within and, between and among the different federation units. So the calls that you've seen made in the south is similar calls have been made in, in the southwest, in the north central part of the country. So it's important that the government is sensitive to these calls and ensure that they leverage, you know, whatever feedback that they have to encourage a genuine dialogue about the Nigerian project. There's a lot of, you know, resentment you know, uh, um, within, within the country, unless we want to pretend about it. Well, the issue of who builds the catch has also arisen in this uh, admonition, you know, so to speak, especially when you compare the body language of the federal government. Of course, weeks to, to the polls, they've also, you know, warned IPOP and its, its supporters not to try anything funny. And, of course, we've already seen report, uh, reports of how many security operatives that are on ground, you know, ready to start work to ensure a free and fair and peaceful polls in a number of states. So how do you compare this? No, I think the federal government has demonstrated sufficient ignorance of what is going on. It is either they are genuinely ignorant and, and, and don't have a clue what to do, or they are deliberately stoking the fire just to make that place unstable. And we have sufficient evidence. You call it body language. It is spoken language. Mm -hmm. They have said more than is necessary to be said to cause the Southeast to burn. Now, having said that, my suggestion is, talking about who will build the cat, I think that what the political class in Anambra does, the political elite, will matter. Regardless of who wins the election, whether it is Chukuma, Soludo, or it is Andu, Uba, or it is um, Valentine Ozigbo, since these three leading um, candidates are all in agreement that there is a common solution to dealing with IPOP. Can they coalesce? Can they, for the sake of peace in their state, say that no matter who wins the election, we will all come together? I don't know if it is mere far fetching or wishful thinking, but if they can all come together to say, even if we disagree on other issues, on IPOP, mm. yes, let us manage to come together. Let's, let's try to, you know, close ranks and Set see how we can. The reality is that every state in this country has the potential. I do know that Anambra State alone has what it takes to turn around Nigeria's economic fortunes. Mm. If you want to un undertake manufacturing, you can't look past states like Anambra and Abia. But the reality is that, you know, politics, corruption, insecurity are factors that will continue to hinder and inhibit the full emergence of the full potential of our people. You know, so if we have that understanding that, okay, look, we're going to chart a new path for, for our people. Let's let election co let's, let, let this election come and go, and let's sit down and have you know, a proper roadmap to settling these issues. Uh, it will create a template, a foundation, upon which all other peace efforts can be built. But I am very certain that for that to happen, we will have to look past Bahrain and his government. 
maybe after 2023 when he's gone, that's when we can sit down and meaningfully. Ipa wasn't this violent and was wasn't was, wasn't like this. And Amber it wasn't, has, wasn't volatile. Uh, wasn't this volatile? Either, it, 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 it has taken the mismanagement of. Uh, and so for the southeast too. It let, is let me get some some final take. Some say I don't know whether there is still time for a peace accord, but is this also your thinking that the, the three parties? The three, well, the biggest parties, or oh. everyone, oh. some have even said you are, you are cheating them for calling out just the three. Absolutely. And, 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 I, and I share that sentiment. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that, absolutely. In the spirit of... The, the, the dark horses. Uh, in, yeah. in, the, in the spirit <laughs> of uh, an open playing field. But yeah. what will it be uh, for you? The multi-party system. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you talked about the peace accord. I yeah. think that um, oftentimes when we, have had, when we have seen that done, it's just... Um, uh, it's for the optics. You know, the, the, the politicians don't seem to take themselves, you know, seriously. And I've always said here, and, and I'm not going to um, uh, differ from what I have said in the past, we need peace, but we shouldn't have, we can't have peace of the graveyard. If there are underlying factors that could threaten peace, then those factors have to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. Injustice is one of them. Inequity is one of them. Mm -hmm. So those issues will have to be dealt with. And I agree completely with, um, uh, with Cyril. Cyril, you know, that... Um, the gladiators in, in Anambra should not just, you know, um, be mounting, you know, uh, dialogue, you know, uh, let's talk and all that. They, they need to, they need, they need to put action to it. We want to see what happens post, right. post November six. It's important because the the peace that we we are angling for in Anambra has to be much more enduring, and we hope that that would even translate, you know, to the entire across uh, uh, across the Abs entire base of absolutely. This Sammy Bemere, Cyril Abaku, thank you so much. Uh, for your wonderful insights on the program Thank today. You very much. And that's at 7 on Journalist Hangout uh, this uh, Tuesday edition. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for another episode of the program. And remember that you can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tonight at 11. You can also join us on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. for Journalist Hangout on Sunday. And we're on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Kemi Foladeyemo. From all of us here, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.